Good evening. Welcome to Firebase. I'm your host, Gary French. On tonight's show, we have one of our favorite guests. I know he's one of my favorite guests. Now, he's not the only guest that we've ever had, so it goes much farther than that. We have John Graves, CEO of Million Voices. And, and I've got to tell you, and I just want John to know this as well, many of our viewers have reached out to us to let us know how much they enjoyed uh, a couple of shows that we've had with him. And one he shared with Pastor Mark Cowart. And he's going to share some wonderful insight and commentary. And friends, we're going to let you know the, the bad stuff, but we're also going to leave you tonight with good news. And that's the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, as we get started, let's, let me begin with some questions and some commentary. Friends, what should we do when it seems like the whole world is, as the old saying goes, is going to hell in a handbasket? And you know exactly what that means. It suggests that the entire world is turned upside down and gone crazy. Uh, can I even say crazy today without being canceled? Have you noticed that it seems chaos is everywhere? We hear reports of calamities, natural disasters, shootings, forced vaccines and mask mandates, a more socialist leaning within our nation. And we have a president now that is allowing hundreds of thousands of illegals to cross the border. And his leanings towards socialism is not only stunning, it's shocking. And on it seems a personal level that he's not dealing with full faculties. I, I don't want to sound cruel. The folks who don't want to get an experimental vaccine are being called haters and backward thinking individuals. I've sat down with friends of mine over a cup of coffee and hear people opine about all of the, the terrible news that's going on in our land. And they seem to forget that Jesus has promised he would give us peace that passes all un human understanding. We're told that death due to the communist Chinese party's virus is going to hit everybody and there's going to be dead bodies all over the streets. And listen to this. Democrats attack Republicans. Republicans denounce Democrats. Socialists march in the streets and demand, demand that you give them your property. We're told to defund the police and replace them with social workers. I thought about that the other day. That, that would work out great. No problems there at all, replacing police with social workers. I can just hear a, a bank teller being robbed uh, right now. Uh, say, we need you to send over one of those new social workers and they get there say, sir, can you help me understand why you're robbing the bank? Uh, can you help us process your feelings? What's your emotions for all this? And can we just sit down and talk together? I really understand. Well, friends, we watch things like a, a dear pastor in Canada be arrested because he just preaches the gospel. We see a cancel culture telling us that our churches cannot and should not meet. And in Australia, we see the police brutally attack, beat, uh, assault and choke innocent people because they're otherwise peaceful because they're refusing a mask mandate. And now in the United States, the Department of Justice has been ordered to target what they call domestic terrorists. And it's the domestic terrorists, it's the parents who are simply challenging the local school boards. My friends, it seems that our world is playing out some sort of end times movie. The stage is set for the greatest drama of all time. And just like the wizard that was in the Wizard of Oz stand, the man behind the curtain, my friends, we need to know and you need to be encouraged that the curtain of all the evil and violence that's in our world today, that curtain is about to be drawn back. And we need to know that truth will prevail. We need to remember that what we witness today is not some sort of make-believe drama or fiction story. What we're seeing today being revealed right before our eyes is the fulfillment of what our Lord and Savior Jesus said 2,000 years ago. These things must happen, but we must never be complacent and we must never allow fear to overwhelm us. What can we do? What should we do? Well, John Graves, how's that for an introduction? Let me pass the baton to you, friend. <laughs> A lot of great news. I think I think we all have a choice. And and I think all the time about the frustration the disciples had in the New Testament because they wanted it now. They wanted power. They wanted everything already here. And and Moses wanted to take things in his own hands. And when he knew he was going to deliver, he knew God was going to move, and that's who he was. But sometimes we can either take things in our own hands and rely on our own flesh or a candidate and put all our too much hope in, in a particular person. Well, that's or powerful, John. We just get we just give up. We just get in despair and wring our hands and it's never going to happen. And, 
and become passive. And that's exactly what Satan wants. If he can give you enough bad news and he can overcome your hope, um, then, then what happens is, I mean, think about it. Then, then you're no good. You're, you're no salt. You're no light. You're not using your voice. And so I'm optimistic because I, I stay in God's ways and God's words. And yes, I get frustrated. Yes, I get bewildered. Yes, it's easy to do that. We don't have the easy path that God gave us. We have a path that's full of hope. And it's not just hope for us. We're the ones that have the answer for the people that are that are making all these crazy decisions. Hey, I tell you what, that, my friend, that is so powerful. I, I was just reading yesterday in my, my personal devotion out of Exodus. You know, God calls Moses. And Moses had a little bit of trepidation, shall we say, about going to get this. And then God said, you know, and I have to remind people, to the Egyptians, who was Pharaoh? Well, he was God. And God told Moses to Pharaoh... You will be as God, right. and your right. older brother Aaron, your older brother, will be your prophet. So, mm. it, it, what's going to happen is that when you take the stand in the truth, and it's for us here, the truth of the gospel, and we know that God's not given us a spirit of fear, and we know He says these things got to happen, but we we push back not with not with hatred. But with yeah. the good news of the gospel, people will respond to that. And I think your words are very appropriate for us right now, my brother. You, you know, the, the scripture that keeps going off in me, my, my family and I are watching The Chosen first season. And we got to the, I think, the seventh episode where the, the people are just fighting, busting through the roof for their paralyzed yes. friends. Yes. Get yes. them home in front of Jesus and the raw compassion and the refusal to say no and the refusal to be turned back by the Pharisees or the Roman soldiers or the crowds or anybody else. If we had that heart, that would be exactly what God would want because we're trying to rescue the unborn that nobody will speak for, the crime invasion that's happening at the border where there's rampant, out of control, uh, you know, sex trafficking of little bitty children. It's it's horrible. That that compassion should motivate us, not fear. And Amen. so I, I think I just come back to that over and over. I wept when I saw that. Yeah, I, I tell you what, you wait till you get to season two on The Chosen, uh, because <laughs> it, when he starts calling, the, the, there's, you see more disciples, and the calling of Nathaniel is wow. just absolutely stunning. And, mm. and when he says, it, Jesus speaks to him, I, it, I know we're getting off news topics, but when you talk about the gospel, you just got to go with that. And I know. he says, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. And the dramatics that uh, uh, Dallas Jenkins brings to that audience shows that God knows us even when we are sitting in self-pity right. or despair or we're not, we don't even know what we should do next. And, right. and let's segue now to that. Don't you, see, don't you think and find that, I could say the nation, but don't you think that a lot of the church feels that way today? It's like we just sort of, the government says close down, so let's close down. What can we do? And and. Of course, we should pray, but we should do more than just pray. A lot of it, you're right, Gary. A lot of it is who you're going to obey. Uh, I was, I'll was i never forget, I live in Texas, and so our governor decided when the COVID thing broke out, he was just going to become a dictator and say who was essential and who wasn't. And I'm a pastor, I'm an ordained pastor, but I wasn't essential as a pastor. But because yeah. I'm an attorney, I was essential. That was on his list. He just made up a list. The legislature didn't meet. The people didn't vote. He just made up a list. Who's essential and who's not? And too many times I, I thought the people, I had been in Israel, literally, and I had just come back and this edict comes down in March. And I thought people aren't going to stand for this. And they did. Yes. They were silent. They were complicit. They were passive. That's the opposite of what we're supposed to be. And so I think what happens sometimes, Gary, is we see the radical left, the BLM, yes. burn yes. down, defund. And we're like, well, we don't want to do that. It's like, no, but we don't fight against flesh and blood. We're not trying to burn down buildings. Our hope is not in this world like theirs is. Amen. Our hope Amen. is in another world, but we're supposed Amen. to bring that heaven down here on earth. And so uh, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we do get involved in the heavenly realms and in the practical realms. And the joy for me is we get to elect who governs us. There's all kinds of worthy debates and fights right now going on and people finally dealing with voter integrity issues. But we have to main, maintain those kind of issues because we live in a country, at least right now, it's drifting away. Uh, but if we can preserve it, we get to elect who governs us and we need to show up as the church.
You know what, I think it's important for the church today to remember that our sovereign God knew who would be here alive during this moment of history. And for those of us who profess to be followers of Christ, it encourages me to say, that, to believe that God says, I've entrusted to you, John Graves, I've entrusted to you, Gary French, that during this season you'll be faithful. And I think that's part of the mantra, that, or the, I should say the mantle, right. like Elisha, that we should, God's allowed us to be uh, alive during this time. And we've got about 50 seconds for our first break. Do you see that to be part of it, the issue that we should I, value I, that God's chosen us right now? I do, and I would go back to your story. I haven't watched the second season, so don't give me the spoilers, but Nathaniel, <laughs> Jesus said, is a man in whom there is no guile. We're not here for the motives of this world. And that's the problem with both parties. You know, it, you can take any issue you want to, and neither one of them are fully committed to Christ. Uh, and then we need to influence even inside of those. And so to me, believers are the ones that have, should have no guile, should have a pure purpose. And even mm -hmm. our enemies, we're trying to save all these issues for them too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Friends, we're talking with John Graves this evening uh, from uh, Texas. He is the CEO of Million Voices. And when we get back, we're going to see a short video clip and then we'll react to that. Stay tuned, my friends. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back. We're talking this evening with John Graves, CEO of Million Voices. Before we enter into our next uh, segment, we want to show you a short video clip of what can happen when a teenager can take a stand against a local school board. Watch this. Good evening. My name is Leslie Mendoza. I'm a senior and the president of the Turning Point USA chapter here at LTE. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Turning Point USA is a nonprofit organization that focuses on teaching students about the benefits of the free market, limited government, the principles of freedom, and American values in general. Most kids my age don't learn those anymore. Earlier this year, on January 3rd of 2021, my executive team began the process of starting this new club here at school. Unfortunately, as expected, we received immediate backlash from the community and our fellow classmates made it clear that they would not tolerate our chapter on campus. In the months following, wow. in the, months following the submission of our proposal, a group of students who called themselves Concerned Students anonymously created a petition on change.org to keep hateful organizations out of Lyons Township High School. The group received 600 signatures from students and community members within three months. Students directed the petition to the District Board of Education, the superintendent, the principal, and they demanded that they deny our proposal. Many of the students who signed this petition, even the creators, were later found sending heinous messages to our conservative team members. We find it ironic to hear comments telling us that there's no point in being alive if we're going to dedicate ourselves to such stupid causes. Wow same students who preach tolerance and acceptance for all. Members on our team are targeted daily, threatened, and have been verbally attacked in public simply because they're openly conservative. Students and community, community members aren't the only people that have tried to keep us off campus. After six long months on June 4th of 2021, the Director of Student Activities let us know that the stipend committee had officially denied our proposal. Initially, the only reason... Initially, the only reason for this decision was that the organization was a part of a partisan political nature. Knowing that there are several official clubs that are partisan, we, qu we quickly questioned the reasoning and immediately made it clear that there had been a major mistake. The only reason that the stipend committee had denied our proposal was invalid. Wow, what an incredible voice from a very articulate young lady. What you, what's your reaction to that, John? I, I'm encouraged. I I think it's incredible. Here, here's why I think that that is a perfect example. You can listen to that story and go, it's bad there's silence in our side. It's bad there's silence in students. It's bad there's silence in parents. The FBI is watching out for school boards now, but not the radical left who's burning down buildings and police stations. That's the negative. But look at how much is powerful when you speak, when you use the voice God gave. God created the whole world by speaking. That's why we called it Million Voices. There's millions of us, but we're being silent. And That's we right. want to be a megaphone for people to use their voice. I, I keep reminding Gary over and over in my spirit of the two spies that came back with a good report. They didn't deny That's the right. facts. They didn't deny, yes, we got some serious problems in this country. But they said, but God can do this. We can do Amen. this. God, God can do this. And so that's, we, we, we choose 
to be one of the 10 spies and the negative, oh, it can't be done. It's too much. They're too big. There's giants in the land. Or I don't care if there's giants in the land like big tech and mainstream media and the far. I don't care. God's bigger than all of that. Amen. So Amen. I, 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 I rejoice with young people like that, standing up and parents standing with them. I, you know, I just recently shared with a group about uh, that the Lord will overcome the wicked one with the breath that he breathes. Yes. And, and it's like, I gave this wonderful picture. It's like God's going to look at one day and just sort of go, that's, right. that's going to be the end of evil. And, and for me, this, that the significance of evil and Satan is really not that important to God because he can take care of it. And I think, I think the real yeah. issue today is for people. It's like, when God, when, and you know, yes. we're going through days right now where we hear the, the, from, from D.C. about we're going to build back better. But it, from the military to foreign policy to local school boards, it seems like it's not really about building back better. It's about tear down quicker. Yeah. And they're tearing things down. And the church, for whatever reason, I'm stunned by this on a regular basis. And last time we, we talked about this a little bit, I... Well, what can we do? I, I know we're praying. I know we're asking God. I know we're seeking God. But for me, the first thing is don't lose hope. You know, how can we encourage our folks with that? Here's one of the things we developed. You and I talked about this, I think, on the earlier program, but we've been working for over a year to develop this, trying to figure out how can we help people? How can we be a megaphone for all their voices? And what we learned is state representatives are the ones that you can influence if you live in their district. There's over 7,400, I think, across the United States and all 50. So we built a software system where people can go to millionvoices.org. They sign up and give us their address, their voting address. We match who their state rep is, who their state senator is, and then we give them the contact, the email, the fax. And if they want to, for a small donation, we'll even send the postcard from them to the state rep and the state senator, not from us but from them, we want them to be the voice. And really people are starting to respond. We launched it first on the border. We're about to do crime next. We're gonna to go to critical race theory, life, all the critical issues of our day. And we're trying to stay out of it. Our name's not on the postcard. We're trying to get them in habit, whether they're a pastor, a business owner, or just a citizen that cares to speak up and pick up the phone and call them, <laughs> go visit them, make a little investment like that young lady. What kind of feedback are you getting from you know the people that are involved in this, knowing that you're sending the postcards in their name? It's incredible. They 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 literally on the phone. They can do, even sign their signature electronically wow. and just submit wow. the whole thing. And we do all the you know people in this culture they don't have stamps and postcards and you know know who to contact. I mean they could do it, but we kind of did all the cumbersome work for them. Same thing we've done for pastors in the past. And, and we try to make it simple so that we magnify their voice to the most influential person they could change Amen. for these things. Amen. Uh, I'd love to be able to get to a point where we had all the school boards. That's even more uh, complicated because so many of them. But we're, we're, we're hopeful that one day we could build that. Hey, listen, the, the, the idea of the, the school board is, is absolutely vital. Uh, David Barton always talks about we need to work on the local level and government yes. works best from the ground up. We think if we just get the right guy in the office at, White, at the White House, everything would change. Nuts from the bottom up. And That's we right. had an issue here in one of our local school boards that uh, a school board member was either quit or retired or something happened. And so the school board themselves was took applications to... Uh, appoint a new person. And there was one lady, absolutely rock solid, had two master's degree, but was unable to find uh, her high school transcript because it had burned down, the school had burned down in the wow. records. And they said, well, we're sorry, you're not qualified. So they went and hired or recommended to bring somebody on the school board who was a recent transplant into the county uh, mm -hmm. that was pro- uh, critical race theory, pro-homosexual uh, agenda, pro-everything that Christians stand against. But the parents got together, and I gave them space where they could do that. They got together and said, no. Well, guess what? That person was pulled from the selection process. So what you're saying is absolutely targeted and right, because if our church members don't get involved, you know what? what's going to happen? Well, 
it is the going to hell in a handbasket. Loudoun County just did the same thing. They pushed back against all odds the the critical race theory that basically think think about how silly this is. The, to me, the critical race theory, the BLM movement, or the defund the police—that's the modern KKK. It's racism. You're basically saying we want everybody to get along. So the way we're going to get along is every single white person in the world is a racist. And even if they don't think they're racist, they really are racist. Now you all get along. Well, the white people are going, I'm not a racist. I've never been a racist. Why? So the way I can get along is to admit something that's false about who I am and what my motives are. That's not my motive. It's never been my motive. And so yeah. people can see that in you just because a fraction of the people are racist on, on both sides, all ethnicities. That's true. I, that's true. I, I keep coming back to the scripture in Acts that says there's one human race. God made one Amen. human race. Amen. There are different ethnicities. There are different nationalities. There's different languages. There's different skin tones, cultures, all those things. But there's only one human race. And Amen. so in the Amen. church, we're the ones who stood up first for uh, slavery to end. And it was people who, who were fighting white people and hundreds of thousands of them sacrificed their life to free people who are a different ethnicity, a different nationality, and a different skin color. That's Amen. not a systemic racist nation. Amen. That's a nation who acknowledged its sin, acknowledged its problem, and fought a bloody war, and people gave their lives, led by the church, to Amen. free other men. We'll come right back, and we'll just take your breath, pick right up where you were. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This evening has been a delightful evening for me, talking with... Uh, a man that I would just call a dear friend and we've never even met, but he's a brother in Jesus Christ. You know, I, I've got a cartoon that I'm looking at. It shows a picture of an FBI man with sunglasses on. He's got, a, he's got an earbud and he's got his finger holding it there and there's flames all in the background and there's a building and it's talking about domestic terrorists. And he says, nothing to see here, mostly peaceful BLM protest. Now get after those dangerous parents speaking out against critical race theory. Well, you know, that's one of the things. It's, to me, it's one of those diversionary tactics talk to, to get people aggravated about something and to not talk about the real issue. And here's the second issue, and then I'm going to turn it to uh, John. 12,000 of the 17,000 Haitians who amassed at the Mexican border recently are already in the United States. So, John, those are two of, it seems like, the dozens and dozens of problems facing America and the church critical race theory, and illegals coming into our border. And you know what? You get the choice. Talk about both of them or either one of them. What's your observation on those? You know, I think you're right. I think, to me, the FBI, we live in a nation right now where you can uh, walk scot-free if you commit a felony of arson and burn down a building. But they're, and they're, and they admitted this week, the FBI admitted, they are not keeping a database of all of those rioters with the BLM burning down buildings. They're not tracking the far left. Who are they tracking? People who showed up for the president's speech, calling it an armed insurrection, and not an armed person was found yet. Everything was was armed. And and what I think is the real crisis is they're going after parents and, and schools. I just read this today. One of uh, the men that was at the January 6th uh, event uh was arrested and by all accounts from family and everybody else was he's a peaceful was a peaceful guy he's died he just died just this week wow. in their prison and that's without his rights that's without ever being formally wow. charged because it's such an egregious unlawful act to detain citizens isn't that like is that the fourth amendment or something like unreasonable uh Search and then you've got the yeah and then you got the yep. the fifth amendment and it's like and the First Amendment to come hear a speech yeah. and have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. The FBI was uh, was part of, we now know, they've admitted, they were part of the crowd that stirred up the instigator. Now, to be sure, out of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that came, there were troublemakers. So yes. it's no different than the New Testament. Remember the Apostle Paul? There were troublemakers in the crowd. There's, there's always that element. And you can call it the far left, the far right. I think there were both of those kind of 
malicious intent, but the overwhelming majority, majority of those people were not. Senator Ron Johnson says that 38 percent of the people in the Capitol were waved in looking at the video surveillance, which he's laid eyes on. I yes. haven't seen it, but he's a senator making that claim publicly. Yeah. And, and then you've got the problem at the border. They're trying to distract from that, I think. And it's 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 not just what you just pointed out. Let me give you one statistic. In August of 2020, last year, under President Trump's administration and his policies, 47,000 people were found, only 10 released into the United States. A year later, this August, 195,000 people were caught, 43,000 of them released into the United States without a COVID test, without a criminal background check, without any way to track them or where they're going. And the new 3.5 trillion uh, billion or a trillion dollar bill, the thing that they want to do with them, Democrats, 8.2 billion per year is going to illegal families, people who aren't even citizens. And we as the taxpayers are paying for it. And so that's why we picked the border first is people. It's a criminal invasion. We need to speak out against it. And the state reps are the ones that can change that. Amen. Absolutely. John, we've got 30 seconds left. I would love to have an hour program here, but uh, we want people to support Christian causes on Christian television. How can they reach out? And you're giving you about 15 seconds. How can they support Million Voices? Just, just go to millionvoices.org, look at the news commentary, sign up for the postcard, do those kind of things. And we give commentary and education all the time. They can just go to millionvoices.org. Amen. Brother, you are a delight. You are a patriot and you're a staunch believer in our Savior Jesus. Folks, thanks for tuning in tonight. Be sure to watch us again next week here on Firebase.